So I have to add beer pong champ to my, um, my intro now? Yeah, occasional yeah. beer pong champ. Okay. I'm here with Canadian country singer, songwriter, director, actor, and nine time CCMA nominee, Wes Mack. How's it going? Did I, did I get it <laughs> I all? I think you got it all. You okay, got it good. all. I... That's quite an extensive list you got there. Yeah, I, uh, I like to stay busy. Well, thanks so much for being here today. Oh, it's my it's pleasure. super exciting meeting you. I know the first time I saw you perform was at Boots and Hearts in oh, wow. 2015. Okay, so, cool. A couple years ago now. So as a fan, I really appreciate you being here today. Oh, seriously. It's my pleasure. This is like this is what I'm here to do. Oh, well, thank you. Now, congratulations on House on Fire. Thank you. It came out on January 12th. Yeah. And it's already getting amazing reviews and hits. Yeah, and I've, been, I've been very fortunate that people like it. It's like you spend so much time working on something like that and it feels very satisfying to have it come out and people be like, oh, you actually did a good job on that. You didn't totally blow it. Like when you're the only person who's heard it, you and your like close friends kind of thing, it's yeah. very, it's like nerve wracking on the day you put it out. This, this just felt good. This was fun. Well, what are your thoughts on it? What does it mean to you? I feel like almost a lot of the stuff that I'd written since I wrote my very first single that like came out duet, I had felt like I needed to sort of counterbalance that with something more serious. And I think this was all of a sudden the like, snapback permission of like, oh, wait, you can still do that kind of stuff and still have a really good time with it. Right. So all of a sudden, I just started writing a ton of songs. I wrote 60 songs to piece together the record, and probably about in the middle was when this happened, and, and like the latter half of it all of a sudden started being like, I was just having more fun with the writing, and it yeah. was just like I could be silly with it, and, and that was House on Fire. It was like I, I wrote it about a house party I went to when I was 17. Feels just right. Kind of party, get you talking all year. I got my boys and all the girls are here I grabbed a drink She made me think <laughs> About 52 cards for the truth of dear And got my head spinning like a record player Oh, 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 yo Where did you go? Now, you said you wrote over 60 songs Yeah Which is out of this world. There's a lot. Yes. There's a lot. And you also recorded 36 demos, yeah. right? Yeah, which is what, I got the 36 on the shirt. 30, oh. Now this, I didn't like have this made. I saw this in the store <laughs> after I had done all this and, so like, and was literally it. picking, I was. I went to the store being like, I need a yellow shirt for the music video. And I walked in and this was there and I was like, that's strangely on the <laughs> on the nose. Now, what was it about House on Fire? Out of all those all those songs that you wrote and, and demoed, what was it about House on Fire that made you want to release it first? I think... I was kind of moving towards something with House on Fire of like, there's a few songs actually prior to House on Fire that I wrote that are kind of similar to it in flavor, okay. but I kept on kind of going back to it because I didn't feel like I'd done it right yet. I wrote it uh, in Toronto. Uh, I was here and I, I met these couple of guys at like a songwriting camp. We never got to write together and we all happened to have a day free on the weekend. And I was like, hey, you guys want to just like go and do this? Yeah. And it, it honestly was just like a really easy write. It came together in a few hours. Um, we recorded the demo vocals that day and those are actually the same. That's the final vocals that made it all, all the way through to the record. I sang it like twice and we just, it felt oh my right. Gosh. But yeah, I, I don't know. There was just something about it. Like, I, I don't know if there's nothing I can really specifically say beyond just like it felt right. It felt like the song I wanted to come back with. Now you released your single and on the very same day you also released the official music video True. for House on Fire. So is there a particular reason why you released both on the same day? Yeah, I mean, I, I just uh, I wanted to fire everything at yeah. once on that. On, honestly, the music video for that, uh, again, I had the pleasure of directing that. Not many people get to you know be both the artist and the director on something like that. I wanted them released on the same day because if I could, ideally, I'd kind of love people that to be like, you know, their first exposure to it, right. or at least their second, if you know, if they've heard it on the radio. Like, I like the visuals that go with that. Uh, I like beer pong. Yes, it's we, we all like it's beer fun. pong. You know, it's good. <laughs> Was it easier or harder directing the music video because this is, it's your song, it's your baby? I mean, like, I've done that. So I've directed 12, I think 12 music videos now, and I've directed most of my own music videos as a couple that uh, other directors did. There, it's definitely you're wearing a lot of hats at times, and sometimes yeah. it can feel like, I, I intentionally try and not be in every shot. Like, there's a lot of shots in that video that I'm not in, which is great, because then I get to actually be watching the monitors for it. Um, it was a lot of planning that went into it, and kind of, like, a lot leading up to it, but the actual day of it was just, like, it was a lot of fun. Uh, and that, I think that shows in the video. Yeah, oh yeah, it, it's a party. Everyone's yeah. everyone's having a blast. Well, and when you're watching it too, right? You actually feel like you're part of that party. Yeah, you just yeah. Wanna, that's, you want to grab your beer. I mean, <laughs> the hope is on that is that it, like 
-hmm. It's inclusive. I yes, feel like everyone's been inclusive. there at some point. Everyone's like been in that beer pong game. We want to be really, you know, we want to take it really serious. Though. Yes, it's like yes. it's very intense. But you have to, you have to take beer pong serious, oh, I, right? I, like you can't. I remember all through through university, like me, me and my buddy Pat were like always like partners in beer yeah. pong, and we we took it like deathly <laughs> seriously kind of thing. Like it was. I, we had, like, almost a flawless record, I think, for a few years. Oh, wow. or, or, or I would point out that if we ever lost, we probably had lost those memories uh, by that point in the evening. <laughs> so this is, those don't count. When the world gets low, little one love on the radio. Don't mind the trouble, you know we're getting into. Dancing in the dark in the neon light. Everything's better with the Miller light and the whiskey burning strong. We can get along, we can get along, we can get along. So you have a new single and a new music video yep. and 60 songs written. So does this mean we can look forward to a new album you can. soon? Yes. So there should be an album, I would say, in the fall this year. Uh, well, what can you reveal about, about, the album. about the album or any future singles? I think the main thing for this album, beyond everything I've said so far, was just like I wanted something that was sort of made to be played live. You know, I, I feel like... Since putting out the first record, I've gotten to go and play on stages that are significantly larger than anything I would have done in the past. Right. And it all of a sudden changes my perspective of like what I want um, out of songs. Um, can we expect any tours or shows in 2018? Yes, I can say nothing. I uh, uh, but you can't but, reveal anything yeah, on Q and A uh, I, I can't. I can't help anybody on that one. I can't. Um, but I, yeah, I, I will be out on the road this year. Okay. So follow Instagram, Twitter, Facebook for at, all breaking at news. West Mac Music. That is me across everything. Um, so yeah, all right. come check it out and say hi. Well, lastly, I do want to mention you are an actor. True. And you starred in a movie with the love of my life. Which one is this? Uh, what was it like working with the Liam Neeson? Okay, I didn't know where, I didn't know for sure if it was gonna land on Liam yeah. Neeson or if we were gonna pull something way from like further back in my career. And it, uh, 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 it was superb. Um, I met him on my birthday, which is pretty oh, cool. Uh, what and a I, birthday present! And, and I walked in the room and he goes like, Wesley, how are you doing? And like, I heard you're from Calgary, uh, and I was like, you know anything about me at all? I was like, cool. Uh, he he, honestly, he's he's extremely. He's everything you would want in 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 an actor and in, in a person in that situation. And that like uh, no ego. Uh, he he was one of the only dudes of that caliber that I've ever seen who didn't have like a special chair set off to the side for him. He was just like chilling out on a bench with everybody else. There was a woman on set who would like hand out everyone's like per diems and stuff. And she yeah. also had this like arsenal of cookies available. And he'd always swing by at like midnight at the end of the night and just chill out. And, like yeah. so all, all that stuff just uh, it, it, like couldn't speak more highly of him. He was great. Did, um, did, he, did you talk to him about your music? Do you think he uh, likes country music? <laughs> I, don't, I, I wasn't plugging him with it. Uh, I mean, honestly, the other thing is, like, yeah, you know, we, we shot a bunch of stuff together, but, like, you know, we're, we're a little bit averse to each other in, in the film of it. Yeah. So, like, you know, sometimes around those, like, you don't want to be, like, chatting the entire thing because it's weird and you have to flip gears. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I didn't. I didn't plug Wes Mac tunes <laughs> into his ear. Maybe next time, you know. Liam, Liam missed out. Yeah, Go well, ahead. We'll see. You, you can chat with him, but get him on here and tell him, <laughs> tell him what's what's going on. How does a certain special, lovely Lady K get invited to the premiere? Okay, um, you probably got to call Liam for that. I don't even know if I, how I'm going to get invited to the premiere. <laughs> well, I was going to say, you just, know, if you need a if you need a date. Yeah, yeah. Just, no matter what the day, what the time, <laughs> like I'm available. Okay. I'm, all right, but you're probably just gonna jump ship as soon as like no, I'll, I'll no, roll no, in there. No, and be like, no. oh, there's Liam Neeson over there. I'm like, oh, I, how did I get under this bus? I feel like I'm under a bus no. right now. I okay. wouldn't ditch you. All right. it's, we'll on, see. it's on camera. I wouldn't ditch you. I'll be. I'm just saying. Your date. He's very tall. I know well, you don't have to. You, know? you don't have to convince me. He I'm is very tall. To in, the choir. In, in in person, I didn't realize just how tall he is. Oh, I know he's magnificent. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. It's been great chatting with you. Lovely meeting you. Yeah. Um, congratulations on House on Fire. Can't wait for the new album. Thank and you. And like I said, you know, I'm, we need a date. Let's call you up. I'm right here. Just slide into your DMs yeah, kind of thing. Shout out to Stride Entertainment for facilitating this interview. True. They're great. They are great. Oh, hey. Have you hit the subscribe button yet? Because I'd hate for you to miss more videos like this one.